Hi everyone, welcome to you. In this video, we will see what will happen to trigonometric ratios if trigon trigonometric ratios of angle theta is replaced by trigonometric ratios of 90 minus theta or 90 plus theta or for that matter any relation with quadrant angles. We know that quadrant angles are 90, 180, 270 and 360 degrees. So, if we are adding or subtracting the quadrant angles from theta then how the values will change. Based on that let's also generalize and get a formula which we can apply easily. So let's start with so to find out this let's do a simple step. What we will do now is I have taken the same unit circle we have the angle theta that is made by the point okay, x comma y so now we are interested in 90 plus theta. So what I will do, I have drawn a perpendicular to this so that the total angle, this total angle is equal to 90 plus theta. What I am, let me just try to, this angle, oh maybe the colors are matching, so I will just put it this way, this angle is 90 degrees this angle is theta total is 180 so this angle is automatically equal to 90 minus of theta let me repeat that again now we have been given sign of we know that a particular point is making an angle theta in counterclockwise direction positive direction now we are interested in finding out the values how it changes if it you add or subtract quadrant angles. So for that to find out first 90 plus theta what I have done is I have drawn a perpendicular to the line let us say this is O OP so that the angle it makes with positive direction of x axis is 90 plus theta. Since this total angle is 180 degrees, this becomes automatically 90 minus theta. Now we know that theta and 90 minus theta are complementary angles. That means we know that sine of 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta and also cos of 90 minus theta equal to sine theta. This we have done in earlier videos. Now if we take sine of 90 minus theta now if I draw if I draw this right angle triangle you can see that this is nothing but equal to x and this is equal to y that means now the values of sine and cos are changed so that's how 90 plus theta is behaving now let's go a little bit and this draw extend the line whatever the theta we are having extend it so that it touches on the other side so it becomes a diameter now you can see the angle this is theta this is 90 degrees and this is another 90 degrees this is another 90 degrees that means 90 plus 90 plus theta that means this total angle is equal to 180 plus theta theta plus 90 plus 90 that is 180 plus theta now you can see very clearly you if you if you if you want to just to draw this right angle triangle if you want to draw this right angle triangle and compare this with this right angle triangle you see that both of them are congruent because this is equal to x this equal to x and also you know this is equal to y and y and also you know that these angles are vertically opposite angles so in this case in this case what happens this is y and this is equal to x that means sin remains here sin let's put down our observations in 90 plus theta sin becomes cos cos becomes sin whereas if I go for 180 plus theta, sin remains as sin and cos remains as cos. 
Similarly, if you go for 270 plus theta, you can see that these two are again congruent triangles. So you can see that in 270 plus theta, again sin becomes cos and cos becomes sin. So we can generalize this. You can see here 90 is nothing but equal to pi by 2 and 270 is nothing but equal to 3 pi by 2 whereas 180 is nothing but equal to 2 pi by 2. So I can generalize this by saying that n pi by 2 plus or minus theta of any trigonometric ratio let us say let us take here sine sine and here let us say cos now how they will change if n pi by 2 plus or minus theta sin theta if n is even if n is even that is 2 pi by 2 case if n is even then sin of n pi by 2 just a minute let me just erase this so that easy this is sin of n pi by 2 plus or minus theta cos of n pi by 2 plus or minus theta if n pi by 2 plus or minus theta if n is even then sin of this will remain as sin cos will remain as cos that means sin theta will have sin theta cos theta will remain as cos theta we are not talking about the sin here sin we will decide based on the quadrant in which we are in whereas if n is odd if n is odd then this will become cos theta and this will become sin theta. So this is the general formula which we can apply. This is the general formula which we can apply. Let me just try to summarize that. Now we are interested in, we know that theta 90 minus theta how they behave. We know that sin theta and 90 minus theta are complementary angles. That means they both make an right angle. So we know that sin of 90 minus theta equal to cos theta. Cos of 90 minus theta equal to sin theta. That we have learned earlier. If you are interested also, it's pretty simple. Just you take a right angle triangle. Let us say this angle is theta. This is 90 degrees. Then this is 90 minus theta. If you say this equal to x and this equal to y and this equal to r, you can cross check that sin theta equal to x by r whereas cos 90 minus theta is also equal to x by r. So sin 90 minus theta is cos theta, cos 90 minus theta is sin theta. Now we are more interested in if we add 90 or 180 or 270 or if we subtract, subtract the angle from 180 how they change. For that for the first thing to check at 90 plus theta what we have done is we have drawn perpendicular to the the to the line i mean to the point actually which is making an angle theta degrees so this is nothing but we know our sin theta and cos theta sin theta equal to y and cos theta equal to x now what we have done is we have drawn a perpendicular we have observed that when we have drawn the perpendicular the angle it makes the perpendicular the angle it makes with the x axis is 90 minus theta because this is theta and perpendicular is 90 degrees 90 plus theta so remaining is 90 minus theta so that this is a straight line angle we know that on a straight line the total angle should be equal to 180 degrees when i take 90 minus theta i know that theta and 90 minus theta are complementary that means my x here my cos will become y and sine will become x that means sine and cos interchange whenever i go for 90 but when I go for 180, I see that sine and cos remain as the same. Similarly, when I go for 270, I see that sine becomes cos and cos becomes sine. So based on that, we have generalized that 
If you want to find out n pi by 2 plus or minus theta, where theta is between 0 to 90 degrees, sin, if n is even, then sin remains as sin and cos remains as cos. But if n is odd, sin will become cos and cos will become sin. Let us try to do one simple example so that you can appreciate this concept. Let us take a simple example. Let us try to do this one. Let us do this tan of theta minus 14 pi. Tan of theta minus 14 pi. Now we know. 14 pi. Pi is nothing but equal to pi radians equal to 180 degrees, right? Now, first of all, I am not comfortable having theta here. I know only that if it is n pi by 2 plus or minus theta. So, what I will do? I will say it as tan of minus of 14 pi minus theta. And in the last video, we have learned that tan of minus theta equal to minus tan theta. So, I can write it as minus tan of 14 pi minus theta. Now, this is in the form of n pi by 2. This is in the form of n pi by 2. Yes, because 28 into pi by 2 is nothing but equal to 14 pi. That means minus of tan into 14 pi. I can write it as 28 into pi by 2 minus theta. N is even, 28 is even. So what will happen? Tan will remain as tan. And where where this quadrant is, we will see 14 pi minus theta, right? See here, if I take one revolution 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, 12 pi, 14 pi. Remember that once you cross a 2 pi, it's nothing but resetting to 0. So 14 pi for me is nothing but equal to let me say something like it, it's coming again back to the 0, 0, right? Now, I have to go back by theta. That means I'll be in which quadrant? I'll be in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, you know that tan is negative because all, all, sin, tan and cos. Only cos and secant are positive here. That means tan is negative here. So, I will get minus of tan of minus tan theta this is nothing but equal to that is nothing but equal to tan theta you can crop you can just go through that I'll explain you again see here we have been asked to find out the value of tan theta minus 14 pi now we only know that if it is n pi by 2 plus or minus theta so I have taken minus out and written it as minus of 14 pi minus theta we know that tan of minus theta is minus tan theta. So I have written minus of tan 14 pi minus theta. But this is nothing but equal to n pi by 2 minus theta where n equal to 28. And 28 is equal to even. If n is even, then sine remains as sine, cos remains as cos means tan also remains as tan. That means it's nothing but equal to my tan. But we have to worry about the sine. To get the sign, I have checked in which quadrant this 14 pi minus theta will be there. I know that 2 pi is one revolution. If I do 7 complete revolutions, I end up here. If I have to subtract theta from here, I am coming into the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, tan is negative. So this becomes minus tan theta. So the whole problem solves down to tan theta. Let us do one more simple example. We will continue this in the next video also. I will do another simple example. See here, sin of minus 405. Let us solve this. Sin of minus 405. Okay. Now I have to write this in the form of n pi by 2 plus or minus theta, right? Okay. Now what I will do? I will first say sin of minus theta equal to minus sin theta. I will say minus sin of, minus of sin 405 because we know that sin of, of minus theta is minus sin theta. Now 405 I have I can write it as minus sin of 360 plus 45. 
I can write it as minus of 360 plus 45. And you know that once you cross it 360 degrees, that means one whole revolution is over, you are back to zero, that this, this is nothing but equal to zero to me, right? So zero plus 45, that is minus sine 45. Or you can also check it in another way, that n is even here, a, you, n is even because n pi by 2, this is nothing but equal to 4 into pi by 2 because this is equal to 2 pi. So, sine will remain as sine and you are going to the first quadrant, in first quadrant sine is positive. So, this remains as minus sine 45 or minus 1 by 2 2. We will continue these examples in the next video, but that is how you can find out the values of 90 minus theta. It is basically what we are trying to learn is we are learning step by step. In earlier videos we have learned what happens if I apply negative, that means sine of minus theta. We learned that cos of minus theta is cos theta and sine of minus theta is minus sine theta. Now in this video we are trying to learn, yes we know about theta and 90 minus theta, but what about 90, 180, 270? If I add subtract theta from those quadrant angles, quadrant angles are 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360. That's what we have learned. So how we have learned? We have just gone through that. Whenever you add 90, sine becomes cos and cos becomes sine. Whenever you add 180, sine remains as sine, cos remains as cos. That means the general formula is if n is even, sin remains as sin, cos remains as cos. If n is odd, sin becomes cos and cos becomes sin. We have we have looked at couple of examples. We will continue that in the next video. Where we will also see all the general values whatever we know about, uh, about 30 degrees or say pi by 6, pi by 4, pi by 3 and pi by 2, pi. Then we will also do some more examples. Thanks for visiting. Bye for now. This is about uh, what will happen if you add quadrant angles to a particular angle or subtracting the angle from a quadrant angle. Thanks for visiting. See you in the next video. Bye for now.